Acá viene tocando Melvin Cartagena. Y atentos también en el estudio porque ya salió a calentar el banquillo del Inter Miami. Gracias. Cuando acá viene Julio Cibrián, el toque del número 2. Va Cibrián, lo marca Kremaski. Apareciendo hacia atrás. Viene Mario González, el toque por fuera. Apareciendo está Diego Flores. Allá va moviéndose Darwin Seré. Ah, hoy, hoy amaneció adelantado Javier Fermán, ¿no? Sí, porque primero porque achica muy bien, ¿no? Los centrales del Inter, todos los centrales del Inter, y él no se da cuenta que tiene que, que, que entrar para poder meterse de vuelta, ¿no? Hace el movimiento. Y queda siempre los Acá viene tocando la pelota, compañeros. A ver, dale. Ya calienta Tereso Benítez y también Jefferson Valladares en la selección. Por fuera, interesante, ¿no? Sí. Tamacas, no puede tamacas, ser tamacas, claro. Claro. Pues tamacas. Hay, que, hay que ver por quién se decide, si un lateral, lateral, como es Tereso, ¿no? o un pelotazo largo. Allá va Tamacas, que no quiere salir, va Tamacas, el remate, y en el fondo sí, Jay Santos, el esfuerzo de Brian Tamacas. Estuvo cerca ahí y ahora sí parece que no va más. El número 21 evidentemente no quiere salir. ¿Sabes algo de lo que le sucedió a Tamacas, William? Y de momento parece que es un problema en el tobillo derecho. Eh, no alcancé a escuchar qué le decía exactamente al cuerpo médico, pero sí manifestó que haría el esfuerzo por continuar. Perfecto, y se le notó en ese último esfuerzo que no puede más. Y yo digo... Evidentemente, no, y a lo que voy, evidentemente nadie quiere salir, pero no lo vas a arriesgar. No, por eso te digo, sacalo. Claro. Está jugando con uno menos. Acá viene Messi, recuperó bien la pelota, el toque del Inter Miami, va Messi, la apertura, la dejaron pasar, va Jordi Alba, al arco, Alba, al centro de Alba, tiempo el corte, van buscando a Messi. Y ahora va sacando Darwin. Y ojo, es porque ya Tamaca pidió cambio. Sí, amaneció, es que amaneció adelantado. Y ojo, profe, no, no era con Fermán, era pasado. Sí, pero la tenía cerquita, no se está dando cuenta Fermán de que está adelantado. Tiene que trabajar, tiene que saber cómo está paradito. Mira los costados, sale, entra. Y lo van a habilitar muy bien porque el Inter deja mucho espacio. Si lo aprovecha, creo que el Salvador saca una ventaja. Acá viene tocando hacia atrás Silla y Santos. También porque Tamacas ya pidió cambio. Sí, ya veíamos hace un ratito, ¿no? Lo de Tamacas que le había hecho la seña al técnico Daniel. Acá viene el toque de pelota por parte de... Julio Cibrián, William, ¿por qué? ¿por qué el reclamo de Dóniga? Porque lo veíamos hace un ratito el reclamo. Sí, el problema es que él quiere transiciones rápidas y no lo está viendo en la selección de momento. Perfecto, buenos detalles. Por cierto, ahí aplaude precisamente David Dóniga cuando viene Luis Suárez. No hay falta. Ponga, se de pie el 8 porque llegó bien para cortarlo. Rudy Clavel y se quedó con un golpe en la espalda. El número 9 hacia atrás. El toque, recuperó Messi, se equivocaba Cristian Martínez, va Leo, arranca Messi, sigue Messi, hacia adentro Messi, va Leo, Messi, le dejó atrás la pelota a Gregori, llega a Darwin Serén, pelea y será de manos ahora para el conjunto del Inter Miami, si el último en tocar la pelota era precisamente el jugador ahí está. nacional, y ahí está, pidieron el ah. precisamente, ¿no? Sí, pero cambiarlo rápido, porque si no, te está jugando con uno menos, y mira dónde se mete Darwin. Darwin por momentos se tiene que meter también ¿no? a colaborar en la marca. Y en el centro de Jordi Alba, Suárez hacia atrás, sirvió de defensa, igual le quedó a Busquets el remate de Messi, no de primera para Busquets. ¡Messi! ¡Mario! ¡Messi! ¡Mario! 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 ¡Gigante Mario González! ¡Por donde quiera que se le mire! ¡Gigante Mario González! Y ahora viene el azul y blanco hacia el frente. Cortando estaba ya Noah Allen ante... Nelson Moría que robó bien, acá viene la corrida precisamente de Javier Fermán. Gigante Mario y la frase es... No me toquen a Mario, ahí estaba, ¿no? El mano a mano con Lionel Messi, ya la vamos a revisar. ¿no? Y el uh, arquero de selección nacional que ahogó el grito de gol del mejor jugador del mundo y capitán del Inter. Qué buena jugada. Claro, hoy, 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 sí, Juan. Claro, no. Levantó todo, es que se levantó todo el estadio. Tanto por, como atajó como, como remató Messi, ¿no? La fantasía, la habilidad, la rapidez de un Inter con el, uno de los mejores jugadores del mundo, si no es el mejor. Muy bien, reaccionó el portero de la selecta. Tenemos muy buen portero de la selecta. Acá viene tocando la pelota ya Cristian Martínez para Tamacas. No se va a hacer el cambio entonces al final, William. Nadie acelera, nadie se mueve, nadie va a entrar. 
De momento los dos que estaban calentando mantienen el mismo ritmo. Bueno, está bien. Veremos si puede continuar entonces Brian Tamacas. Aparece Melvin Cartagena. Lo va llevando no a Allen. Se lo quería llevar para la casa también a Melvin Cartagena. Y será tiro libre para el cuadro salvadoreño. La falta. Y no hagas falta este 4 de febrero. Y participa en las elecciones de, de presidente, vicepresidente y diputados de la Asamblea Legislativa. Participa. Ahora, la devolución de Busquets también. Ahí ¿eh? Messi buscó por arriba y después le tiró el túnel. ¿eh? Le tiró el caño ahí. Mira, mira. No le quedaba otro. Mira, 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 mira. mira. Ahí busca la pared. Ahí está. Mira la de Busquets, pero el esfuerzo. O sea, el esfuerzo que hace y la devolución es perfecta. Porque a pesar del esfuerzo, toca bien la pelota. No, muy bien. ¿Ah? Se combinaron muy bien. Jugada saliendo... que levantó todo el estadio. No, claro, fue un jugador, jugador todo, porque el Mario González extraordinario. Cuando acá viene recuperando Jordi Alba, tocó hacia atrás. Apareciendo está Noah Allen. La pelota para este número 6, Tomás Áviles. Ahí va Tommy Áviles, el argentino por el medio para Leo Messi. Tocó de primera para Sergio Busquets. Abre ya la cancha. Va con Noah Allen. Se va metiendo Allen. Ahí está Noah. Allen, cortita. Va otra vez con Noah Allen. Busquets levanta la cabeza, levanta la pelota. Qué buen cambio para Gressel. La de Cocorta, nadie cerró. Suárez se le ve que físicamente no está bien. Y acá viene saliendo desde el fondo ya el conjunto de El Salvador con Javier Fermán que aguanta la marca. Va con Nelson Bonilla que va girando. Salió bien Nelson. Va Bonilla. Qué bien limpió. Va Nelson. Levantó. Acá no hay fuera de juego. Va Fermán. No hay fuera de juego. Fermán no había fuera de juego. Pero sí será tiro de esquina. Ahora sí Javier Fermán no estaba en fuera de juego y no pudo controlar. La tuvo El Salvador en esa contra. Está bien, está bien. Bueno, ahí arranca, ¿no? Y bueno, estos son los detallitos en los cuales Javier Fermán tendrá que ir mejorando si es que se quiere quedar en la selección. Primero, que no lo pesquen en tanta posición prohibida, tiene que estar un poco más despierto. Y segundo, tratar de aprovechar ¿no? también este tipo de situaciones que se generan en ataque. Vendrá el tiro de esquina, levanta Diego Flores, cerradito a las manos del arquero CJ Santos. Allá intentaba salir rápido con Jordi Alba, pide calma precisamente el guardameta. El toque hacia atrás. Era Kremaski. Aparece Noah Allen. Para encontrando por el sector de la derecha a Leo Messi, como en sus inicios. Apareciendo otra vez el cuadro del Inter Miami en la salida. Ya se paró, por supuesto, ¿no? También... Eh, uno de los jugadores que puede ser un revulsivo para el segundo tiempo para el conjunto del Tata Martino. Ya está de pie Facundo Farías, el ex jugador de Colón. Cuando acá mirá la pelota que metieron para Jordi Alba. Mario, Mario, Mario. Gigantesco Mario González. ¿Puedo? Dale. No me toquen a Mario. Otra vez. Qué pelota, la profundidad, la típica. De estos dos jugadores que se conocen a la perfección, una pelota de lujo y ahí está. Mario, Mario, Mario. 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 Y vendrá el tiro de esquina de Messi. Pero ojo porque ya nos están llegando con mayor facilidad. Viene el centro de Leo Messi. Pasada la pelota, el corte le va quedando a Suárez. Mete el centro Suárez, el cabezazo. Nadie alcanzó a cerrar por el segundo palo, menos mal. Será saque de puerta para la selecta. Profe, no cerramos tan bien el primer tiempo. Las más claras la tuvo el Inter, ¿no? Eso es indiscutible. El, el arquero, muy buen nivel. Empieza ya a mermar un poco, ¿no? Más allá de la presión. La parte física, después de empezar a cubrir los sectores, que ya se viene el Inter. Así que, pero de todas maneras, nos sirve para corregir errores. Ahora, eh, hay un detalle, ¿no? ¿A quién, ¿A quién le gana la espalda? ¿O por dónde aparece Jordi Alba? Claro, por dónde estaba Tamaca. ¿Dónde está Tamaca? Si Tamaca está tocado, entonces, ¿eh? o sea, hacer la sustitución, porque por ahí que llegaron, rápido. que llegaron dos veces con dos diagonales. Cuando acá viene el toque de pelota, precisamente está... Áviles, ahí está Tomás, Gregori, hacia atrás, otra vez para Teandre Jetlin, apareciendo Áviles, Allen, este es Noah, Allen, 41 y medio, Suárez, de pecho, y Kremaski que no va a llegar, será saque de puerta ahora para los Unilá. Pero ahí te fijaste en la jugada esa, ¿no? ahí está el pase exquisito para Jordi, ¿no? mirá, 
muy lento se vio quién, o sea, primero que Cibrián no cierra, segundo que Tamaca no retorna, porque no tiene piernas, porque está lesionado. Y en la jugada anterior también tuvo que salir Cibrián ¿no? para el pase de Cremachi. Entonces, dale. Digo yo, no sé, ¿me entendés? No, sí. ¿Ah? Lo que pasa es que el sistema son dos, tres en, 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 el, en el fondo y los laterales volantes en este caso. Sí, pero Tamaca que tiene que cerrar, uno está. Y ya viene Darwin Seren que levanta la pelota para Brian Tamacas, que no va a llegar. Sí, llegó CJ Dos Santos, que se queda con la pelota, decían. No, y, yo no decí... llega, y ahí está, que no marca y se complica. Claro, pero yo te digo, o sea, lo que te digo, si tenés, sí, mirá claro. cómo regresa Tamaca, regresa arranqueando. Entonces sacalo, ¿para qué lo tenés? 15 minutos jugando así. Cuando acá viene el toque de primera de Sergio Busquets, aparece Leo Messi. Allá va Leo Messi, mirá la pelota que metió para Gressel. Llegará a la línea de fondo, el centro pasadísimo de Gressel. Ahí lo tenía la masa a Gregori. Por eso le dice Gregori, ¿por qué no me la das a mí si estaba cerquita? Será saque de cuerpo. Dejó pasar para tirar el centro, pero ya lo llegó sobre la línea, se equivocó. De todas maneras, está llegando el Inter. Ya hay muchos espacios. Y por fuera, ¿no? Exactamente. Porque ahí están los laterales volantes que decimos nosotros y que juega la selección, no están haciendo la función. No se olviden que son tres centrales, laterales volantes. A esa es una sí, línea de cinco. Si no se marca, se va a complicar. Claro, pero ¿por dónde, por dónde está llegando más el Inter? ¿Por la alta marca? Sí, claro. Eso a está, eso me está refiero. Claro. Sí, entiendo lo que quieres explicar del funcionamiento, pero te llega por el lado de un tipo que, que está lesionado. Mirá quién está como lateral por derecho. Eso, por eso se ha quedado ahí Darwin, fíjate. ¿Ah? Por eso ¿Eh? se ha quedado Darwin. Cerquita, cerquita por momento. ¿Ah? Claro. Ahí el toque de primera para Darwin Serén, precisamente lo cortaba, ¿no? A Allen recupera el Inter Miami, que está más completo físicamente. Ya nos está pasando factura la parte física. Buen anticipo de Diego Flores. El toque de primera para Melvin Cartagena. Ante Sergio Busquets va Cartagena. Otra vez Darwin hacia atrás Serén. Llegaba Messi para presionarlo. Saca Mario González. La pelota que le queda facilita, ¿no? A Allen. El toque de primera. Entrega ya a Gregori, va con Luis Suárez, que va a girar, va Lucho Suárez con Messi. ¿Qué va a hacer Leo? Sigue Messi a la zurda, va Messi. Sigue Leo con Suárez, el toque para Busquets. Ahora ralentiza el juego el Inter Miami, le va a pegar, no a Allen. Prefiere abrir con Jordi Alba, por izquierda. Alba ante Tamacas, ¿qué va a hacer Jordi? Alba más atrás, apareciendo no a Allen. La vuelta a empezar ahora con Tomás Avilés. Mantiene la posesión de la pelota el conjunto del Inter Miami, Jetlen, el balón con Busquets, acá está Sergio, va Busquets con Noah Allen, levanta la cabeza, por el medio, se juntaron los amigos, qué bien salió, va Kremaski, Messi, una lástima, una lástima porque era un jugador, se juntaron los amigos, Kremaski le entregó mal, todavía le falta para entrar en el club de los amigos a Benja Kremaski, ¿no? Se juega un minuto más. Perfecto, gracias William. Todavía le falta Kremaski para entrar en el club de los amigos. No sé, tenía dos posibilidades, ¿no? También no, tenía no que pegarle, ¿eh? No, no le pega al arco, claro, ¿no? Se da el lujo ¿viste? de no pegar al arco. Sí, ¿eh? pero... Pero que lo viste los dos ahí. No, claro. Se da el lujo pero, de no pegarle al arco. Claro, pero tenía para eso. Yo pensé que cuando enganchó era para pegarle, ¿eh? La pelota arriba, de cabeza, se acaba. Ya Sergio Busquets, ahí está un minuto más, lo que nos confirmaba precisamente William hace un ratito. Acá viene el cambio de juego. William, cuidado, ya te vi dónde estás. Ahí está el eh, guardaespaldas de Messi, tené cuidado también, ¿no? Toque hacia atrás. No, aquí te está protegiendo, ¿eh? <ríe> Va, Viles. La pelota con Jordi Alba. El toque, Busquets, Alba, el cambio de juego, a ver, ¿no? Va por el medio, sigue Jordi, lo perseguía Nelson Monía, por el medio hay espacio, ahí va por el interior Leo Messi, el toque de Suárez, va Messi abajo, bien, Rudy Clavel. El árbitro uy, dice que no, que hay falta. Uy, 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 uy. Peligrosísimo para el conjunto del Inter Miami. ¿La cobró por el espectáculo? Y vamos a ver, vamos a esperar, vamos a ver. Vamos a esperar la repetición, ¿no? Porque, a ver, a ver. ahí lo va a buscar. No, no que lo toca, toca. lo rapó, ¿eh? Cuando marca la pelota se le va sí. al pie y lo toca en el tobillo y cobra a Barton eso. ¿no? Sí, 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 lo alcanzó a raspar ahí, mirá, mirá. Ahí toca. Ahí, ahí, ahí y, ahí. y ahí lo toca. Ahí. Rapa, rapa sin querer, ¿no? Cae Messi. Bueno, la posibilidad entonces ahora para Lionel Messi que ya se recuperó, pero enfrente tiene a Mario González. A ver quién se impone entonces. Le va a pegar Lionel. No, ¿quién se impone? No, va a patear él. No, 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 por eso. No, entre Mario impone, y Messi. Entre Mario y Messi. Ah, y Mario, ¿Quién, claro, ¿Quién se impone? En claro, el duelo. Claro. Ya se impuso una vez, bueno, en dos, dos veces. oportunidades seguidas, ante Messi, Mario González. Ya pío, ya pío, mira. Ya lo Ahí vi. está. 
Coloca a Messi. Y está en el centro la pelota. Va Jordi Alba sobre el arquero también. Ya se cumplió el minuto, será la última. Le va a pegar Leo, le va a pegar Messi. A ver qué intenta Leo Messi abajo. Y el despeje cuando el árbitro dice que se termina el primer tiempo del compromiso. Acá en el estadio Cuscatlán, 0 a 0 el marcador entre la Selecta y el Inter Miami. 0 por 0. Iremos a la pausa y volvemos por el tradición en deportes. No nos cambien. The eyes truly of the world upon the American footballing landscape. The night for Nelson Bonilla is done. A bad showing for 33 year old up top. qualifiers and waited a while before he got back into the fold again with a new head coach and trying to resurrect this program from what is among the deepest steps they've been in turn things around after a win this 2023 turning back to some of that young blood like a Vasquez nuts at the end of that as well tempers flaring here just the two yellows given it seemed to Gregory and to Darwin said and right away I don't know that on a night with VAR Darwin said and would still be in this game it's definitely a friendly game <laughs> watch what he does at the end of this well, not here but there's the push through there. and then there again as well I mean to be fair on the kick out I have an argument for Gregory, just a stern talking to. Gregory's role will be interesting this year too. You know, we, we spoke about him and his relationship of what could be. Ouch. Alongside Sergio Busquets and though Busquets was primarily the deeper single, deeper single pivot, excuse me, in the first half. You know, you saw some side-by-side -side collaborative efforts there. He seemed uncomfortable that high on a regular basis, Gregory. Not that he can't be there, but that's going to be a role that he's going to have to become more comfortable in, right? Given the names that are around this squad, and if he is to be that mainstay that we had seen in so many matches prior, he continues to do so. But then immediately in the second half, you flip the switch. You're right back in that the friendly confines of what is really a, a 40 yard play. It's interesting that you have so many young guys in right now that are doing this and they can have their own little moment of destiny. This may be one of those situations where you never know what's going to go on. Even though they may have that uh,
Nations League game. And between Busquets and Gregory and look out here, Dos Santos. He's getting it elevated and up off the chest of Fermán. Handle it in the end. The moment's never too big for him to just continue to push and play through it, but now you're going to have to find a way to work through the moment just because of all of the names you brought up. Another one of the big for Miami. Could be a threat for Will. The Marcus Gibson news of Robert Taylor and Will Johnson coming. Pretty damn exciting. Years of age, primarily employing his trade with the MLS Next Pro Team and to Miami too. Of course, they needed another midfielder. <laughs> Forty-one games at the Next Pro level over the last two years for Sunderland. Seven goals, three assists. The team really went as he went in the midfield as the year went along with the injuries to the first team and he had to come up and be on that first team bench more often than not the form of the second team suffered shows you the importance he had there and the possible such a young club still began play four years ago the young players they've been able to produce it's among the top in the league in such a short span the recognition of the talent pool and what is one of the best in the United States and the South Florida market. Being able to wrap their hands all around such a deep pocket of experience and talent on the youth side of things. So consistent for so long. We mentioned the Weston Club earlier for Penamine Kramoski. They've Produced a national title winner, which sounds like, oh, no big deal. Not many clubs have done that. It seems that almost every single player that has come through this academy system has not only done so coming out of really a lot of conversations from that Weston club, but it's not one guy that's been there. They did, they've done a very good job of three, four, five years players now, right? Fifth season for... MLS and Inter Miami and their academy system has just continued to reap the rewards. Western Conference, I would say the same thing very similarly, although the timeline is advanced by about three years for LAFC. Similarly situated as well on talent yep. in the LA area and just doing all they can to embrace that rather than shy away from it in any way. Sir now is funny. Yes, who went down holding his left leg. Tempers are still flaring here between Gregory and Seren. Going to be separated by the official as they're barking at each other. Vidoniga certainly gotten his steps in in the technical area tonight for El Salvador in his first match in charge of this national team on that left knee Farias probably I mean not probably it seems like there's not much of an argument about it he was the best of the three U22 initiative signing players from last year between Aviles Gomez and Farias impact he was able to have the partnership he started to form with Messi produced three goals and two assists in MLS play another goal contribution in US Open Cup 
But yes, one they're counting on Natalie this season. His energy was quite contagious every single time. And a lot of that was coming off the bench, right? But anytime you have a player who has the talent, that's great. But can acclimate themselves to the overall field of play and what the conditions are like, right? So they're coming in and it's a heated game. Okay, that's one thing. It's physical. That's two. That tackle, by the way, angle, not the best of looks. Every single situation that he was stepping into, just seamless in nature, the transition to be able to pick up exactly what that game needed. The one that sticks out as far as matches that he started, the one on the road against LAFC, early going, it was a barrage of opportunities for LAFC. Great calendar made save after save, keeping them in. And then all of a sudden, coming down the other side, Farias sliding from the corner of the box, put it off the far post and in. And you wondered how he, A, won that. And that play alone really encapsulated what he can bring to this team. But it seems like there's a lot of concern here now. That last angle, he showed a very awkward bend in the knee, and he'll be carried off here in San Salvador. Tears. Yeah, you're just hoping this is a precaution, although that picture doesn't seem to be telling the story that Inter Miami is hoping for. Track at home, 19 minutes to go. No official substitution rules of engagement were communicated to us before this game, and they had used already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So we don't know what the rules were, if they can even bring somebody on now for Farias, or if they'll play down a man. They didn't bring anybody on for him there, he came off. That is the absolute last thing you wanted to see tonight, or on the 22nd, or the 29th, first, fourth or 15th in these seven preseason games for Inter-Miami. Mike comes up here, El you know, Salvador. And Devin, earlier you were talking about how last season it felt like every time you turned on Inter-Miami in the early and mid portion of the season, somebody was going down and it wasn't just an ankle or a shoulder that would cost you, I don't know, a couple of weeks or a wrist. It, it was severe injuries. Season ending. Season yeah. ending injuries or near season ending injuries in the case of Gregory who happened to come back the last two games with a foot injury. Everything was severe. Incredibly bad luck they had last year with all the injuries. It's one thing if it's a high ankle sprain that costs you a month or two months not to diminish that injury. Been through it. Don't like it. No. Never want to be there again, but, but yeah, everything but was season ending. To your like. point, Jean Monta was out. Well, what the timeline was given and what actually took place were two different things, but LCL thought was four to six months. Ian Frey, ACL. Gregory, Liz Frank injury. Franco Negri, right ACL. Quarantine Jean, ACL. There's five. <laughs> Did I forget one? I think that's it. which is endless as the year went along. And also with a lot of changeover as well, because look, the nine position. Keller through, gets it back from Campana almost. There was Campana, there was Joseph Martinez. I mean, at one point in time, Schneider Borgelin, who's still on contract here at Inter Miami, but he was involved in the mix. Pirado, Pizarro's contract was bought out in mid-July to make way for all of the moves that were coming in. Emerson Rodriguez sent on Lotus Santos. You know, there was the trade that brought Kamal Miller to Inter Miami. That saw Ariel Lasseter and Bryce Duke take off across the border. I mean, right there. Including the loan by Jake LaCava, which for Inter-Miami fans, that's not a name they knew. 
he was primarily loaned out. That's fine. That's 12 players. If you remove LaCava, 11. First team experience, regularly involved in the case uh, conversation for squad selection, gone. For portions of the season last year where only a trio of guys who were consistently there from the beginning of the year to the end for Inter-Miami. Ruiz finds a way to the end line here. David Ruiz sneaks it in front. Gonzalez has it. And those three guys were Yedlin, Krivsov, Callender. Outside of those three guys, it felt like somebody at some point had something wrong. Salvador preparing some changes now over on their bench as Cartagena gives it away. Sailor. Number one, like Chris McVeigh, currently on this back line, who two years ago had a big role last year, sort of, sort of go away. With just one league appearance after the beginning of July. Joe Allen's become he's pretty comfortable. And they've shifted into a three again, and as he's come higher, certainly in the absence of Farias, he's come. A little bit more advanced down underneath Campana trying to find a way to work off of each other. Problem is, is the counterpart on the other side. Robert Taylor substitute, haven't gotten him involved at all. Guess they're not going to give Cole Jensen a run at attacking mid. <laughs> Up here for Diego Flores, and again the offside flag comes up. Went to Miami now, out of bodies on the bench. Now on Facundo Farias, scoreless, 14 to play. We've have had you along this evening to begin the preseason for Inter Miami, first of seven matches. 27 days traversing 23,000 miles by air. Devin Kerr, I'm Joe Malfa. All started tonight here in El Salvador. Herman cuts it back. Over the back post, a sliding effort. Vasquez, no avail. Not a bad ball played here, just the timing of the run overall. Needed to peel back there instead. A little bit slow to react here for Steven Vasquez. If he recognizes that they're recirculating out on the outside, he immediately starts to retreat. Then you can attack the ball. You're coming from a wider angle as well as to, as to trying to play catch up. Moreno, Leonardo Menjivar, the two checking in for El Salvador. Melvin Cartagena, Javier Ferman, don't give way. Ruiz gave it away, but nailed out by the whistle. Dangerous position there. David Ruiz, a bit fortunate. Darwin certainly knows that's the case for the referee and crew tonight. Not happy with the whistle blown there. Can't say I blame him. See at the end of that why some of David Ruiz's teammates were upset. There was an elbow to the head. 
this is extreme, all the changes made by Inter Miami. But again, as the year goes along, and you talk about that pocket of time where Copa America and the Euros will be in full force, some of the names that could be missing from Inter Miami. I did stay down here more than a second. Amando Moreno picks it up. Moreno, fresh legs just on. And sit in. Looks like El Salvador will be the more likely of the two sides here if there's a winner to be fouled late on. Continuing to force the issue. Down to the midfield, driven from distance. That won't do it. Friendly reminder, Inter Miami is just also playing attack. Yes, down a man still. And it will be the rest of the way. Out of bodies. But... Some of the names, they could be missing during that stretch. They won't be missing all of them in all likelihood. Some guys might not get called to their respective teams. Some guys might not see their nations qualify for these tournaments. But Drake Callender in the conversation is the third goalkeeper for the U.S. DeAndre Yedlin has consistently been called in under Rick Berhalter, possibly for Copa America. Seri Kripsov and Ukraine have a play-in for the Euros. Same goes for Robert Taylor. Finland has a play-in for the Euros. David Ruiz has a play-in for Copa America with Honduras. Leo Campana there for Ecuador. Luis Suarez, Leo Messi, we know will be going to Uruguay and Argentina. And then Diego Gomez from Paraguay. That's nine guys who could be gone for any length of time. Could not be gone at all, depending again on who makes those tournaments. Maybe Ukraine, Finland, Honduras don't qualify. You take three names off the list. It could be Edlin and Callender staying as well, and the list diminishes. But it's possible that nine are gone at that given time. And if you look at the schedule, it's not positive how long some of these guys will be away. Depends how far they advance in the tournaments. But it could be anywhere from three to six games these guys miss, depending on travel schedules and how far they advance in the respective tournaments. So I'm not saying it'll be this extreme, the eight subs they've made tonight, but there are going to be times this year where the depth is absolutely tested. And the influx of competitions and the travel. If you're Tata Martino, and he's historically done a very good job with his, his staff of maneuvering these situations, you plan for the worst and hope for the best. And that's what it's going to be this season as well. Finding a way to make sure that all the depth that we talked about is on full display, that everybody feels like you know, that quality that you've brought to the table, that you can get into the squad no matter what. You know, credit to Phil Neville last year. You know, he talked about it. I understand it. It didn't go the way, and there were a lot of fingers, po fingers excuse me, pointed at him, but there were stretches underneath him where he found a lot of really positive play out of his squad. On the top here, flag stays down, more rattled. And El Salvador nearly in the 82nd minute through Steven Vasquez had a go-ahead goal. We'll go back to that with Phil Neville in a second, but with Steven Vasquez frustrated on his timing just prior. Much better here. All night long, the space between the center backs, quite questionable for Inter Miami. And once again, Steven Vasquez just splitting that space just in between Sergei Kristoff and Ryan Saylor. Noah Allen is out of play. It's interesting how this crowd has changed as the night has gone along. In the first half, if you were to take your eyes off of the game and just listen in, you couldn't quite tell who was going to have a scoring chance if you knew that the game was in El Salvador. It was just as loud when Inter Miami and Messi had a chance as it was for El Salvador. As those players have gone to the bench for Inter Miami, this crowd is wholeheartedly behind El Salvador now, and that last chance showed that. Well, they're just hoping there's a winner, regardless of <laughs> if it's a friendly or not. But you know, where I was going with that comment and everything that Phil Neville spoke about, he was big into the depth that had started to be created. Now, this is early on in the season, March and April, where there was a quality run of form for Inter Miami, and they had some solid victories. He talked about the depth of personnel, but that the best way to be at your top level was when you were out of your comfort zone because you were fighting for your position. That's what has been created here at Inter Miami. They didn't have that prior. So now all of a sudden it's... There are certainly a couple of names that we, it's not hard to figure out who it's going to be. That are the first choice selections that are going to be sharpie into this team sheet. But other ones, like we've talked about, 
if it's Gregory, if it's Mota, if it's Rotation and Ruiz. Now, again, you can lean one way or the other, but it's not going to be as cut and dry as we've seen in seasons past. And certainly not with all the competitions and the players in and out for international duty. Free kick for El Salvador, glancing header. Is for a corner. Have to play in San Salvador. Set pieces starting to rise for El Salvador. Another good look there for Vasquez. Might have been going wide of that far post. Blocked anyway by Lawson Sunderland and now for a goal kick. Strange interchange there between Gregory and Sergio Dos Santos. Dos Santos actually called him off. Seeming that he felt like the ball was going to go over but it already touched one of his players and Noah Allen on the far side. Not sure why he tried to leave it. Robert Taylor for Leo Campana Ruiz on the other side. David Ruiz lost his footing. Robert Taylor mentioned he hadn't really done much since coming on. There was your first look at his attack going forward, but he was a man changed after Messi arrived for Inter Miami, not just in games where Messi played and was a partner for Robert Taylor, but just in general, his entire complexion changed when Messi arrived. Well, the versatility that we talked about is is very impressive for some of these guys. And a guy like Robert Taylor, who can give you a little bit of everything regardless of system. So he's comfortable at the wing back position. You can play him on the interior, down underneath in a 210, and certainly a great distributor of the ball. But with the arrival of Messi, the expectation changes and your level as a player starts to raise. You know, one of the things that I'll never forget is my first time departing this country and when I went to Germany. And everybody said, what was it like? It was faster. It was more physical. You have to get better. You have to will yourself to raise yourself to the level around you. And that's exactly what Robert Taylor did. So it didn't matter where he was on the pitch. He found a way to push through that threshold that he'd almost become comfortable within. Certainly, it's it's not just Messi, and it's the arrival of Tata, and, and you can make the argument with Messi in general, the amount of combination play that they had with each other pushed him to a career best. That's the type of stuff that you're looking for, so that even when there is a change, Joe, the level continues to go and get better, or at least be maintained. How much of it is even just attitude and mindset where previously they were a team that was near the bottom of the Eastern Conference and expected goals and actual goals and points and just struggling to now being a team that had championship expectations all of a sudden. As Messi looks like he will make his final departure this evening down in the stairwell. Waves for a lot of the crowd. How much of it is just the mindset shift of the team itself for Robert Taylor? To me, it's, it's two sayings. Inactivity breeds inactivity and success breeds success. It's that simple. A positive nature. You're, you're always looking ahead, trying to find a way, trying to better yourself. As a player, you can become stagnant in your career. And I want to be very clear. I'm not talking about Robert Taylor. We're going big picture now, right? And what the environment was like. They had reached a point in time where they were searching for solutions to survive. They weren't trying to find a way to go and win titles. How different that viewpoint is now. And so you experience a bit of success. You score a goal. The combinations start to become more frequent in training. You stay a little bit later. You push yourself harder. Everybody else starts to do the same thing. And so the expectation within the group, I've used that word a couple of times tonight, but it's synonymous with what everybody else is trying to, to chase, to succeed in, right? You find that nature that makes you feel better. You want to find a way to make it happen over and over and over again. Footballers are addicts, man. They are, trust me. Like We are creatures of habit, and we want to try and find a way to gain that feeling, that euphoric feeling of success, both as an individual and within a team. You get it once, 
you just want to taste it over and over again. And that could be even the minuscule things, like if your socks are working out and you're on a winning streak, not doing laundry for a couple of weeks. <laughs> it includes anything you want it to include. Let's, let's leave your household out of this. <laughs> 90th minute here. Stadio Cuscatlan. No goals in this tail. Not yet, at least. Come close a couple of times in the second half for El Salvador. Rattling the crossbar moments ago through a Steven Vasquez header. They will leave this game with their heads held pretty high as well. First match under Javi Doniga. A lot of new faces going up against a marquee opponent like this. After a very, very difficult year. to start for David Doniga and the Spaniard just appointed in charge of El Salvador on January 2nd. Three minutes to go tonight and his maiden voyage as El Salvador's head coach and Luis Suarez his maiden voyage top the line for Inter Miami was subbed off with the big four at halftime. The FC Dallas coming up next for Inter Miami on the 22nd. Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern right here on MLSsoccer.com. Temperature's going to be a little bit different in Dallas that <laughs> night. It was, a, it was a balmy 26 earlier today when I started to check and see what was necessary for the carry-on back. Winter weather has crept a little bit further south than you might expect it to. It's interesting, the first time that I seen friends played in Dallas, if you remember in League's Cup, it was triple digits and... It was very difficult to play in. Hydration breaks in either half. We're gonna have about a 70 degree difference perhaps between kickoff temperatures from last time to this time of Messi and Miami in Dallas. haven't really tried forcing the issue offensively over the last quarter of an hour ever since Facundo Farias went down with an knee injury and they've been playing down a man ever since out of bodies to use as subs tough to glean much from this opening performance of the preseason sure certain trends will become clearer and clearer with each passing game, again, that's FC Dallas Monday. Then January 29th against Al-Hilal. First of their two games in Saudi Arabia. And on February 1st, it's al Nasir. FC against Ronaldo. February 4th, Hong Kong. February 7th, they sail Kobe in Japan. And February 15th at home at Dry Pig Stadium against Newell's Old Boys, FC's Boyhood Club. 27 days, 23,000 miles traveled by air, seven matches played, all leading up to Inter Miami's home opener on February 21st against Real Salt Lake on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV. Gonna have one last chance here. It seems like El Salvador. Three minutes of stoppage time will have come and gone by the time this kick is taken. Will it be nil-nil? Or will the home side leave with a 1-0 victory? Floated over the top. Open man just wide. Flag did come up. But Vasquez misfired anyway. Not a bad showing for Steven Vasquez with his addition into the match here in the second half. Just his eighth cap all time. A year and a half removed from his debut back in August of 2021. Again, 75% of this roster for El Salvador had either never made an appearance for country or had only done so in the past 18 months. Have to be mighty proud that looking at the starting 11 for this Inter Miami team probably thought this could have gone a very different direction, but instead kept them at bay, 
kept them at 0-0 and kept themselves in the game all night long with some quality opportunities. And for Inter Miami and Tata Martino, maybe not necessarily the start that they wanted, but we are a long ways away from their desired destination. And just game one of the 2024 season. And a look at that upcoming schedule. It's Monday against FC Dallas. Devin, what more would you want to see from them already on this three-day turnaround from tonight into that game against Dallas? Tato Martino's going to look for balance, right? He's, he's going to want, try and find a way that maybe they start a little bit quicker, defensively shore some things up that, you know, the back line's got to be tighter. Again, this is part of the growing process that you deal with. It's new ready with and all of it, but having a final, like, finished product it's going to take a little, little bit of time. I've got 